Well then, that's the way it's going to be, huh? Sploosh! There, now we're all better. <laughs> Hello, happy Monday, and welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, and disembodied hands, Quindy, Justin, and sometimes John, although I hear that Justin was being a slacker out on a cruise ship, so who knows if he's back? I never hear anything. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, my, 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 my. So it's going to be a little bit of a short stream today, although David's flight was slightly delayed, So, um, but I have to go pick up my guy from the airport, so yeah, we're going to... We're going to try to pack a lot in, meanwhile. <clears throat> and my allergies are all over the place this morning. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, cool, Lady Nim. We appreciate the company. It's always everybody, Twisted Oma. Like, pretty much you've summed up who takes Justin's place. Quindy. <laughs> no, I don't care if you don't learn anything today. <laughs> no distracting Anne. I don't remember. My brain is like, swirl, swirl, swirl this morning. So, yeah, Quindy. Yeah, funny because it's true. <laughs> You're now, uh, you can just like have the Justin like head thing, you know, the standy that where you put it in front of your face. You can make him say funny things. Thank you for the prime sub, Karanika, with the 31. Wow. Wow. Much sub. Much sub, so contribution. All right, like things and stuff. So we have to finish a little bit of gold on this dude. And maybe make it a little orangey red where the fire comes up. Just because we can repeat a color here. So why not? Otherwise, this guy is, uh, except for basing, he's pretty much done. And the basing is super boring. Um, because there's very little of it. So really, you don't have much to do with this guy unless you mount him on a bigger base. Um, if you did, I'd probably just go gravel. Because he's sculpted as if his uh, base is really fine cobblestone or gravel. Uh, so you could just do that if you put him on a slightly larger base. He's big enough where he probably would also cover up any slit in the base. So that's nice. Ah, oh, sick kitty. Bummer. D. Clearman with the resub. Oh, and happy President's Day. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't remember if Reaper technically had this day off. And I decided since I was going to Arizona this coming weekend anyway that I would just stream. Even if Reaper does have today off. Um, let me see. Got to grab my stuff while we talk. That and that. We're going to do some really quick and 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 then and, and probably we'll end the stream talking about what colors we want to do on her. So I want you guys to think about this. What colors you would like to see me do on her. Pick two colors. But we're going to paint. We're going to finish up him while we talk. Um, I like... I really love Arizona, um, lady. Before I, um, it was, if I had moved away from Texas, it was always one of the states that was in my, uh, in my radar because I, I love desert. Same reason I looked at Santa Fe. You don't have to shout out the colors yet. In fact, you should not, but, uh, keep them in mind and later in the stream we'll ask. First, I want to focus on this guy. But yeah, I really like, uh, I really like AZ. I used to have more friends there. And then they moved out to the east coast of Vermont. Talk about a switch with the weather. Because their, uh, their daughter moved out and opened a bakery out there. So they, uh, they actually decided to relocate with her. So I don't have as many friends in AZ anymore. But Bob and Julie are in Arizona, of course. Mustn't forget them. But yeah, I like desert a lot. I think Arizona is a beautiful state. And uh, if I ever... Well, we all know that if, you know, something something terrible happened and I lost to David, I would move to Hawaii. Like, hands down, that's right there. That's We're, do, we're doing that. But, but if I had to pick a second state, <laughs> it would be easy because my parents uh, are... They winter there, so... And I feel like I don't see my mom enough as it is. 
if you know that feeling, anybody, anybody who's a daughter, you got that feeling down. Even a son, technically, if you have a really strong connection to your mom. It's that mom-daughter thing, is that is what I feel, but... I just feel like I don't see her enough, and especially when she's getting older. I do love hot, so this explains why I think Arizona is an awesome state. Keep me away from the evil cold. I turn into a little shriveled up frozen kernel of Anne in the cold, okay? We're not doing cold. I would not move back. I can think of very few scenarios that would make me move to a cold state. Very, very few. Yeah, cherish your parents. I hereby make it Parents and President's Day. Mom and I are, uh, are a lot alike. I get my art art vibe from her, although she never, she didn't really do anything with hers. And now that she's, you know, older and retired, she's like, ah, it's too late to do anything. I'm like, it is not. But, you know, she just, she enjoys just taking classes and working on projects. And so I'm bringing art stuff down to AZ to do some art arting with my mom. Yes, exactly, Bob and Julie. Yes, at least two friends. At least. Um, let's see here. Now we got to get a happy lighter yellow and then we can rock this. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I just think mom doesn't like she doesn't want to have to do it. Right. She, she watches. She sees what I go through. Right. When you make art your job, she feels like, you know, if she really, really went for it, like, I'm sure she wouldn't enjoy it as much. So, you know, all the respect. I just always, I know she's really good and she doesn't like, she doesn't like believe that she's really good. She's one of those moms. But I think that if she had focused on it, she, uh, she had a lot of potential. She used to draw Disney characters when we were little kids, and oh my god, she was good. Like, they looked like Disney characters. And then she just put it aside after, you know, us kids were born, and she just, like, didn't pick it up for a long time. Until we were out of the house, and then she started, you know, doing it again, but... It's cool, though, because now, like, you know, we, we both, when we make a dick blick order... <laughs> It's like we could commiserate on the horrible um, failing our save on the art supply website. Uh, Rax, keep it in mind. Remember, though, I want to do some very small freehand on this dress. So one of the colors being dark would be good. It's a little harder to do really fine freehand and have it look good on a light colored dress. In my experience, at least at this scale. You could do it probably with a bigger model easier. All right, so we've got our colors. We just need a little bit of white. And remember, again, I don't need these now, but remember that I want two colors for the dress because she has definite segments. She has a, a, a drape and she has like things that fall down as drapes. So we need a base dress color and another dress color. Also, her sleeves are, are, are bi-colored. She's got split sleeves. So I will need two colors. Ideally, one of them will be dark. The other may be anything. But again, I do not want these now. I will be asking you again in a little bit because Quindy will do a pull. But not until we're done with Dude. We have to finish Dude first. Okay, so now we got all of our anim 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 anims. Oh, I won't use the rose gold metallic. No, I absolutely refuse to use metallics on cloth on 28. Sorry. Sorry, Rax. DQ'd. <laughs> I don't believe it looks good. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, it's just, it's one of my peculiarities though. It's like just, it's, it doesn't look right to me. If I was going to do rose gold, I'd figure out a way to NMM it. 
But again, I don't. That's not really where I'm, what I have in mind. Thanks, though. You should totally do it. Ah, Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that out in the mountains? Is Johnson City in the mountains? So it does snow. I was going to say, some of Tennessee is quite warm. I like the snow. I just don't like the cold. Like, when it's around, like, 30 and snowing, I'm okay. But the minute it gets down lower than, like, 25, then I start grumbling. I turn into a little frozen kernel of Anne, and I just don't do anything. <laughs> um, it, it, like... It's all up to you, Rex. Like, everybody's got a different opinion here. Just because I don't think that putting metallics on cloth, um, like, I would rather, because of, probably because I, you know, it's harder, but I, I can. But if I'm going to create a metallic cloth effect or a shiny cloth effect, I would rather paint it on. I would rather actually paint it on, like, NMM it, only non-silk silk it. <laughs> For me, that's far more enjoyable, and I think it looks better. But it's just my opinion. But I want to really like the model. And since I, I personally do not enjoy metallics on cloth, that's why I'm going to DQ it. But you should do it on your model. I've see a, I see a lot of people. I mean, that's why Reaper used to do the silks and satins colors, right? And those were metallics. And as I have mentioned on stream before, if you want to mix your own silks and satins, just add a little bit of a clear bright to pearl white 9100. So like, just because, just because I don't think something like is enjoyable for me does not mean that it's not a good choice. It's purely, so much of mini painting is personal, guys. Always remember that. Just because somebody else doesn't like go for the idea that you're all excited about doesn't mean it's a bad idea. It just means, you know, it's exciting to you and not to them. I think I did a, I know I did a Patreon thing on transparent cloth, I think. It was a PDF even, maybe. I think I did it actually on a Julie sculpt with the dragon, little dragon on a bust, I think. I think that model I did both the transparent cloth and the, um, blonde hair. Because she was a, a great piece to work with. So. So for those of you who did order those busts for Bones 5, um, like I said, I used, I used the sorceress with the dragon, the lady with the dragon, um, in a couple of tutorials, if you're on the Patreon. Which is patreon.com slash painting big. And we've got a lot of new patrons recently. Actually, I need to get on and put a hey, welcome new patrons post up because there have been a lot of you. But yeah, glazing is just really thin paint. If you don't, if you're not confident of being able to cover the surface fast, then use a gigantic brush, Brex. Like a, like a, get a big one, big, big brown. It doesn't even have to be a good quality brush. It doesn't have to be Kalinske to do glazing. Just get a big sable mop. Something that is big enough to cover the surface quickly, and then just remember to pull all the excess fluid off, and usually use the edges of the uh, paint job to do that. You can also just do it in small sections if the area of the model is kind of broken up by other stuff. So we're getting that, 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 that. We're getting these highlights in. See, this is super fast. Now let's get our fire color. I want magma. Where did I put my magma red? There it is. An explosion orange. There it is. Great. Yep, learning does take time. You're right. And mastering, I mean, glazing is working with ultra thin paint. So <clears throat> takes a while to get the paint consistency where you want it. Getting some magma red out. Gonna grab that. I'm gonna do exactly what I did on the fire on the back here with this little flame. Just gonna thin down my magma red. Boop. I'm just gonna get that out of the frame so that we can actually, and I took him off of his block, so I'm handling the model at this point, which is why we have to finish him faster. I'm gonna rub off parts. <laughs> ah.
But yeah, glazing is kind of one of those foundation beliefs or foundation techniques that I say you should learn, like, you know, it's like base coating and then it's like washes to start familiarizing yourself with what thinned paint can do um, and lining and uh, then layering and glazing and then wet blending is kind of optional. But those are kind of, that's kind of the mechanical techniques, like all of those, those things are foundation techniques, things that you should master, things that you should work on a little bit at a time. Now, the red isn't going to be, isn't going to stand out quite as well here because one, we didn't outline it with gold and two, it's not against a really dark background. It's against more of a middle background, but that's okay. I do need to kind of, I've thinned it a lot though, so I kind of have to layer it up. I've actually thinned it probably a little bit too much. So I'm going to pop another. Yep. Yeah. I just mentioned those mechanical techniques in that order. I have a PDF on this, a free PDF on my Patreon for those who forgot. Um, but techniques that you uh, should learn in kind of the order you should learn them. So actually, if you've been painting for a while and you feel like you're completely stuck, I would say go back to the basics and use my, um, use my new fundamentals videos on YouTube and like watch the base coating one and just go back to basics, practice your base coating until you can get a super smooth base coat, then move on to the washes one and experiment with that. Then, you know, I'm working on right now I've got the top tips one is going to come out, which will also help with various things. And then next month I'm going to be doing the lining one. This month is kind of additives and top tips because it's kind of two things that I wanted to talk about quick before we moved on. But if you want to kind of reteach yourself from base one, try to do that take up all of those techniques and see if you can really refine them and get better at them, really understand them. When you can get a beautiful smooth base coat and you can get a perfect wash, then move on, you know, you can retrain yourself at any time. Like this whole, I've got bad habits. So yeah, that's just a conscious effort to avoid those bad habits and try to rework it. And it can be difficult. It's not, not super easy, but it is simple. It just takes mindfulness. Getting my explosion orange here so that we can get that fire design. You can see I've gotten the red mapped in. And you can see the only thing that's really keeping the red showing up is its color. And this is because this area is about the same shade as far as light and dark. And, and so that's why we lose it. That's why I say that it's usually, if you're going to do a lot of freehand, it's better to do freehand that is significantly lighter or darker than what you're, than what you're putting it against. So the light freehand, the gold freehand shows up okay on this, except on the highlight areas where it blends in a little bit. But here, the red is the same shade as this teal. And only the fact that they're complementary colors keeps them standing out. It does stand out a little bit more in real life than you're seeing it on the camera. <clears throat> oh no! I'm sad that you couldn't get one, Bob and Julie. I'm sure they will reprint. If they sold out, then they'll be reprinted. But who knows how long that takes, right? these days. Oh, they didn't have enough. We promoted them too, uh, too uh, much, guys. So I'm going to use Explosion Orange. I'm going to blend it up from this gold base coat that I had on, head down. So that I get that an orange to red kind of fade. And this is where the white underpainting is so important. If I had not done this design in white, there was, there's no way these transparent colors would actually show up to be that little flame. Oh, maybe they put it in 5.5. I don't know. 
I have not been keeping track. I ordered my initial bones and then I just stopped looking. Because I, I now have to finish models before I'm allowed to order more. <laughs> so I did not look at the bones, the bones 5.5. All right, so now you got some nice red, red and orange. And we have essentially finished this model except for putting some simple basing on him. So I'm gonna call that done. There we are. All righty. And I'm gonna put a couple more highlights on the gold real quick. But while I do that, it is now time. Get some paint. <laughs> it's a paint lady now. All right. Now I want those suggestions. I need a dark, one dark color and one any color. So I need two colors. Remember two colors, Robin, you gotta have two or I won't, or, I, or it's all off. Gotta have two colors, one dark and one anything. So Lady Nim is back with the black and royal blue, so that's definitely a, a valid suggestion as it has two colors in it. And Robin wants purple and teal. I'm gonna write these down. Black, dark blue. I actually like the black and dark blue idea. Uh, purple and teal, that's the classic. Purple and yellow. What was that, Shadow Raven? About the feathers? I'm gonna go with whatever whatever makes sense with the other colors is what I'm gonna do with the feathers. So the feathers are not up for suggestion. Lady Nim, thank you. Eight months. Purple and red. That's a good one. All right, looking for another. Looking for another. Um. You're still, I'm not taking skin tone suggestions often because I'm gonna base the skin tone off of what will look best with the colors you guys choose. So this is the colors for her general color scheme. I need two colors. I need one dark and one any color. I've got burgundy and cream, black and blue, black and teal essentially. I like the burgundy and cream. All right, all right, all right. Now we're gonna slow down because everybody's jumping in now. Okay, um, let me just, uh, I don't know about the aqua and red violet. I'm gonna pass on that one estrogen, I think. I need to get this down to a, a small section because decision problems. I'll put orange and turquoise though. I hate mint green. <laughs> Sorry, Twisted Homa. <laughs> I, do, I do reserve the right to, uh, We'll have to go with a very dark turquoise with that orange then. That would be very interesting. Okay, here, let me see. Let me see what we got here. I wanna, I've got six suggestions here and I wanna, I'm gonna narrow it down based on what I really like here. So I'm actually gonna cross off purple and teal because we've all seen that color scheme. That has been painted since the dawn of time, thanks to Jennifer Haley. Um, so I think these are gonna be what I want you guys to vote, um, guys. Uh, Quindy, I think we've got black and dark blue. We've got purple, red, black and teal, burgundy and cream, and orange and, orange and turquoise. I, I like those, that's a nice variety of color schemes and they're all gonna give her very different feels. So if we could get a poll, Quindy, with those five things, which would help if I gave them to you in focus. So black and dark blue, purple and red, black and teal, burgundy and cream, or orange and turquoise. This'll be fun. Is, and they're all, like, if you imagine, all those colors are going to give her a very different feel. So I like all those. All right. Current poll is up, everybody. Please, please poll. Please vote. Please vote. <laughs> I, mint green is the only color I truly detest, Twisted Oma. <laughs> My baby furniture was all mint green, so I blame it on that. <laughs> And I don't mind using it as a color to highlight like teal or blue, but the minute I have to actually look at it as a color, I'm like, done, nope. <laughs> All 
All right, all right, all right. Who's voting? I'm, I'm giving you guys a head start before I put my vote in. I actually feel like I kind of like... I want to do that. So we have two clear leaders, but although... Okay, uh, uh, uh. It's there's still plenty of time. Everybody vote. Everybody vote on the color scheme. This is for this lady. The poll should be up at the top of your chat. She's got a beautiful ball gown on her, and we're going to do freehand. But I, I'm letting you guys pick the colors on this one. So I'm watching. It's exciting. I like the orange and turquoise, too. I'm kind of rooting for orange and turquoise. But burgundy and cream is a really good color scheme, too. I don't, I don't know about that. I think that that she's got such a beautiful, like, fashionable gown that she can match if she wants to. Like, I don't, I mean, some sometimes maybe you get the quirky, uh, the quirky madam who, like, dresses in all very loud um, colors. But, however, keep in mind that that she's not necessarily a madam in the professional sense. That could be just her, her title. Like Lady Delia, for example. I personally am assuming she's a noble woman. However, she is smoking a pipe, so she does have some idiosyncratic stuff. Although maybe culturally in her city, that's normal. But I'm not going to make any uh, any uh, judgment calls. Here, let me see. I've got a... Um, hmm, I need a new block. There I am. Block! I did glue her down to this base, but we could rebase her at the end. And when you do this, I mean, it's nice to have her on a base because, you know, she did have a tab. She's a big, heavy model. Um, however, it's very easy to just, even if you super glue a model to the base, you just take a side cutters. Oh, my side cut. Oh, my side cutters are here. Just take a side cutters and, like, just snap the base. Just tr trim it at both ends and you can easily remove a base that you've glued on. So if you want to have a model on a base, just to have something to hold on to. Um, but then you want to change it later to give her a nice display base. You absolutely can do that. And all you're wasting is a tiny plastic base that probably didn't cost you much. <laughs> Perhaps the, uh, there's still, a, still voting open. So if you are coming in late, vote on what colors to paint this mini. What have we got? Oh, neck and neck. I need a tiebreaker. I need a tiebreaker. We've got neck and neck votes on burgundy and cream and orange and turquoise. If you have not voted, please be our... Oh, nope. There we go. There we go. Somebody voted. I, I am unable to watch Les Mis. It is too sad. I do not like depressing things. I'm very much a happy ending kind of person. Oh, oh, Burgundy and Cream is ahead again. Orange and Turquoise had the lead for a second there, and then people jumped in, and it was Burgundy and Cream. I like the music, but I can't, I can't watch it. Too sad. Too sad. Um, so, uh, yeah, guys, uh, Orange and Turquoise has one f tiny sliver of time to catch up to Burgundy and Cream and exceed it. Otherwise, it's Burgundy and Cream. So if you like Orange and Turquoise, and I'll tell you, if David was here voting on this stream and not currently in the air above like Oregon, he would be totally voting for Orange and Turquoise. <laughs> but I like both. So come on, orange people vote for orange. <laughs> oh, it's almost expiring. You only have a few seconds, everybody, to vote. Oh my gosh, oh my god. Oh nope, nope. Another vote on Burgundy and Cream. Everybody wants Burgundy and Cream. Everyone. Okay, not everyone. Oh, 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 it's closer now, it's closer. Oh my gosh, this is a tie. Oh my gosh, we've got a few seconds left. Will it tie? If it ties, I get to choose. And it's almost down. Okay. Burgundy and cream by a single vote. Wow. I'm impressed, guys. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do the, what, what do they call that vote again? That it, Nonetheless, it's like, it's cool, right? That they do the vote where if your thing didn't get in the top two, you get to re reassign your vote. Like, But I think, I don't think Twitch polls allow for that. 
I am okay with burgundy and cream. I can do that. I think it will be uh, pretty good. We might sneak some uh, turquoise in somewhere. We might, we might have to give her an accent color. I'm not sure yet though. Burgundy and cream is such a classic and usually the color you want to put with it is black. Um, if you want it really that rich kind of feel, uh, that's usually the, that's a classic combo. Very, very classic. I will think about what we might use as an accent, but burgundy is like, it's just one of those colors. And the, probably the best color to use to start with if you want burgundy is ergothoa red. Um, burgundy wine is also, you know, but that has a lot of blue in it. Whereas ergothoa is a, a little more neutral to start from. So I think today we're going to start with ergothoa. You demand a recount. <laughs> Quindy. <laughs> oh dear. Alrighty. So cool. So let's uh let's do this. Now I'm gonna I'm still gonna reserve because the thing is doing burgundy, that probably means the trim up here is gonna be either black or cream. And depending on what I do will kind of depend on her color, her like um her skin tone. I'm debating. Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to think. I'll have to think about it. Now, now, let's not get into anime wars. Let's just, you know, back off. Deep breath. Deep breath. It's Monday. We can't start out the week like having a sad. That's all I, that's all I ask. I, I am happy because David gets home today, even if I do have to drive to SFO to get him. California driving. Like, he explained to me, actually. And I, uh, given, keep in mind here, like, I did grow up driving in Chicago. So it's not like I haven't driven in big cities. And I've driven in Manhattan. You know, I've driven in a lot of big cities. But California drivers, they're special. And um, the way that, that David explained it is that because we have a lot of people from different countries that come to San Francisco for tech, for tech careers. And those countries have lots of different driving rules. People get a little creative. <laughs> and I think that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, uh, it's interesting. I'll give you that. But uh, I can, uh, I mean, I can get it because, you know, like we have a lot of people coming from, from Asia, India, and, you know, Korea and, and Japan and China and all sorts of places, right? And India, at least, has very creative driving rules. So um, I can see it. <laughs> I thought Texans were bad, but they only signaled if they were going to go over two lanes of traffic. <laughs> But apparently that was just practice. <laughs> Wherever you live, you like you you have you have like an experience. It's like they teach you the driving rules in school, and then everything else is like free form. It's like you know, <laughs> people creatively interpret freestyle freestyle driving. That's what I feel like California is sometimes. I swear I have never felt like my life was in my hands, like, and my heart in my throat as much as driving back from the city, like, on the weekends. Merely suggestions, huh? I'll keep that in mind and, and never, like, drive myself in. I really, if I go to another country where I know that the driving rules can be um, interesting, I tend to always pay for, like, taxis. <laughs> Like when we were in Mexico, David ended up like, he was like, I don't know if we need a taxi. And then he ended up being glad we did taxis because there was definitely some creative driving rules going on in, uh, in Mexico. So, uh, we were, we were glad we did not try. <laughs> yeah. In Texas, you get that too, actually. You, you get, it's funny cause you get the people that go across like three lanes of traffic and they'll only signal if they're going across at least two. But then we also get the super polite people that kind of block up the merging because they don't want to like be aggressive. So it's, yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. I like to call it creative driving. <laughs> it's like creative writing. All right here. So let's see, I'm going to go, I want to do the freehand. Where do I want to do the freehand? 
oh, now I have to make a decision. I have to make a decision about how. Yes, exactly, Shadow Raven. Um, where I want my free hand to be. I think I want my free hand to be under. Hmm. Because either the cream is the underdress or the cream is the overdress. And actually, I'm kind of... I was originally thinking that the... Um, normally you go dark colors under and light colors over. That's normally kind of a fashion-like thing. But we could do the other way around. And then I would be doing freehand here. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, evaluating in my head the pros and cons. The problem with putting the dark color in here is that then we have the freehand all over, like down here, um, which is not as close to the interesting part of the model. Whereas if we put the freehand on these and these, that's a little bit cooler. And it means we'll reverse the order of the dress a bit, though. But but I don't want to see. Hmm. Hmm. Well, maybe I can do that. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for it. Eventually, you just have to make a decision and go. I think, I think, I think, I think. Yeah, okay, we're going to go for it. I'm going to do this. We're ch we've made a choice. I'm going to do burgundy on the overs and cream on the unders. Which is a little bit reverse. But the other thing this will let me do is make the feathers on the fan light. Because they're against the darker color. And yes, on 28s, I will almost always start with white primer. It, this is a metal, obviously. Um, I won't start with white primer on bones, but then bones are already kind of pale. Oh, I accidentally painted over the little catch there. Oh, well. Yeah, I think this will work. <laughs> oh, crows and bones, yep. Yep, everybody was uh, waving at each other to go first, yeah. If somebody waves at me, I go. Like, that's, I'm just done. Like, I can be a nice driver, but there are times when, uh, when I'm just like, go already. Probably merging is the thing where I'm like, I kind of facepalm myself the most. It seems like every, every state has different uh, merging hangups. Now, we don't have to be terribly neat here on the space coat, but the more neat you are now, the more it'll save you time later. Again, we're using Urgothoa Red, which is a beautiful Pathfinder color, beautiful Pathfinder burgundy. I'll probably be shading this with some purple. But I may go green instead. We'll see. Kind of depends on how I, how I want to run things as far as the, up from this point forward. Oh, I missed a mold line. Curses! I cleaned these models yesterday. Hold on, let me get the in the focuses. I just realized I've been not in focusing because I was painting down here, but then I was painting up here. And I'm gonna grab, do I have my file? I have a file down here somewhere. Files, oh, I have tiny files. These are so cute. They're itty bitty. All right, I need to take this mold line off because it's on the side of the dress. I'm going to put freehand over it and I'm not going to uh, deal with that. Tiny diamond file. Diamond files, I think, are really the only files. I disdained my other files. I disdained files in general until I found diamond files. All right, so now I'm going to find that mold line. It's kind of a sneaky one. It's not, it's very subtle. It's not a lot, which is good because it means it'll be easy to take off. But on a big, broad surface like this, you just don't want to, you don't want to not take it off. There are plenty of times I've fudged on, uh, fudged on some of the cleanup on these models, but if I want to put freehand down here, it's just going to bug the heck out of me, so. 
The reason I prefer diamond files to any other files, the reason I don't even use other files, like I will use a knife before I will use a normal file, um, is because these will take off the mold lines with a minimum of pressure. The angle's a little rough here, so that's why I'm kind of going at it slowly. There. And where is my, yeah, brush on primer. Um, I tend to go for a rich and darker cream if I'm gonna use cream. Otherwise, it tends to read just as an off-white. But we will see how I go with the cream. How I go with the cream will depend on how I go with the burgundy. Every color is a reaction to another color on the model. Like, whatever your first scheme is, as you develop your colors, you should kind of revisit that in your head and ask yourself if it still works or if you want to push it one way or another. So I've got my uh, primer, and since I have primer, it's Reaper Primer, I'm going to add a drop of water to it. Reaper Primer is uh, fairly thick out of the bottle, and I like to use it a little thinner. You do not need a super thick coat of primer on your model. You really just need a lighter coat. But yeah, I tend not to do that that thing which you just said, um, turgeon with the cream. Uh, when I choose a color, I, I go with that color. If I want to introduce something of a different temperature or a different color, I will just do that rather than doing two different creams. Because most of the time I want to vary my light dark mid on a model. So if I were to choose a third color for this, it would not be a cream. I would, I would just like, instead of going with a darker and a lighter cream, I would just go with brown and cream. I would make the firm and solid decision um, to go to do that. Rather, again, this is like what I do and not what everybody needs to do. Whenever I give you guys a tip on here or say that this is what I would do, it's always like just my own personal thing. And you can choose to follow it or to explore it on your own and decide yourself if you disagree just like mint green and using metallics for, uh, for cloth. Remember though, in general, I don't like metallics on 28s. Um, there are some small exceptions, but I love metallics on big models. There we go. Let's make sure we haven't missed another mold line. This side looks great. Up, oh, up, oh, I see one. I really did go over this model yesterday, but you know, you prime it, you prime it and then you see the mold line. Luckily, since I have primer open right now, we can do our little touch-ups. Right, see, that's just it, Turgeon. It's like, you gotta, it's gotta read right in 28. A lot of stuff won't. Like, it's kind of the limit on the, the little stuff. It's gotta read. There we go. All right. I think we're good. Yeah. Otherwise I managed to get all the stuff off. Yay. All right. Back to, back to blocking in colors. And, and as I do this, I am asking myself, you know, what colors everything else is going to be. So I think that I'm going to go with burgundy up the middle. and burgundy on the collar. Cause I want burgundy to be a main player here. Cause I really like this color. I'm just gonna paint over those little gemstones in the middle of her bodice because I'm just, uh, I'll come back to them later. And then what I think I'm gonna do is go Burgundy on. See, and this is this is where you have like intersections where you're just like, hmm. But I know I'm gonna do freehand on this, remember. And that means that I have the option to put a gold border on the on the edges of this or a, or some other color or cream or whatever I decide to do. Since I have the option of putting a border here, 
I can I can connect areas with Burgundy that I otherwise wouldn't. I can choose to do that. I think I want to do her collar in the Burgundy also. I'm hesitating on the on the sides of the corset, and actually the corset has different sections because it has boning. So I could go uh, double color with it if I wanted to, although that would make it even harder to alternate. So I am actually doing burgundy against burgundy right here. Now, there are little gems here or little gold beads. And so that will help to kind of separate these two areas. There's also a dark shadow right under this. So that's what I'm thinking about because normally I would not use the same color up against the, the same color. Like I would not do that. I would alternate colors. But here there's a lot going on on this dress. And so uh, I'm essentially choosing to do this because I know that I've got a lot of other details to break up these areas. And also the decision process is also, I want Burgundy to be a main player on this dress. So I'm gonna block in a lot of Burgundy. You can make cream a main player, but it tends to like just kind of wash out stuff because it's not really a strong color. Cream is more of a neutral, and that's how I tend to use it. So by choosing a burgundy and cream color scheme, essentially what you've done is choose a burgundy color scheme, in my mind. Unless you take that teal, or that, uh, sorry, that cream really yellow, or really orange or brown, it's going to stay kind of only a secondary. It's because it is a neutral. All right, Crowley, 27. Wow. Uh, I would not do that, Dogfather, but you can, yeah. You could do it with, uh, I mean, you could go up with Rose. I'm going to go up with Red because I'm thinking Burgundy like Burgundy wine. So I want it to be more Claret. So I, I want a rich color for this. If you choose a rose color, it's going to be very faded. It's going to be very antique -y looking, which totally could fit this character, depending on, on what you're going to go with. Um, remember, though, the other thing is that as far as conventions go, you're, that color is going to say something about this character. Because pink is usually a color for younger women. Remember this. This is, this is a societal convention. You can ignore it if you wish. But, um, and... An older lady wearing in kind of an antique pink would kind of be like a lady who is like, I want to stay young forever kind of personality, in my opinion, which could very well be her. And everybody's, the thing about cultural associations with colors also is that, of course, it changes, right? Depending on the culture. So how was it put? Somebody else put this really well. They're like, and it may be Sergio. I don't remember. It might be Carol. I don't remember. But somebody said essentially that choosing to like to consider cultural like color meanings is something that you really shouldn't even do on miniatures because you don't know who's going to be looking at it and chances are they won't have the same association with the color that you will so although some people want to choose want to use color symbolism and that's all cool just remember a lot of people aren't gonna aren't gonna react to the colors that way So that's just kind of a thought on that. There's a, I think the, there's a color book I own that I think Betty Ed Edwards goes into a bit, the meanings of color in different cultures, and it's quite different from culture to culture. So, although you can make like, I can say things like, well, pink is usually a color that's reserved for younger women um, in other cultures, that might not be the case. So, but for me, that's kind of what I think in my head. The other thing about using pink, though, Dogfather, is like I said, it will wash out the burgundy. So if you're looking for a very rich, dark red color, using pink will wash it out and make it into a dark pink. It will not stay, it won't stay quite the same. Because burgundy doesn't naturally highlight up, like, if I put burgundy in the light, it doesn't turn washed out faded antique pink. And that's, again, that's my process these days is to kind of think about what color would this actually be if I put it in the light? Yeah, culture is huge, but that's just why it doesn't like make sense always to, to try to go heavy into color symbol, symbolism on the models just because you, 
you know people from different cultures will be viewing it. So what else am I doing here, guys? I'm doing a dark light study, aren't I? Like, by putting in and blocking in this maroon first, because I know it's going to be a principal color, it lets me look at if this is my dark color, which I may bring in some black, but for now, if this is my dark color, it lets me see how I'm alternating my lights and darks, doesn't it? Yeah, the blue pink thing, which it, in is people are re kind of rebe rebelling against even in America. Some people are very, very passionate about it still, but happily, purple is acceptable for both. So yeah, so this essentially now is almost a value study where I am looking at dark light and I'm looking at how I want to break it up. Now, as I go to the back here, I know I've got, I'm thinking I'm going to have kind of black and cream here. So I'll probably carry that back to here. So I want to block in my, my uh, burgundy here. But yeah, so the reason I wouldn't go with an antique rose myself is that it would bleach out the color of the burgundy and I wouldn't get like a, a really rich looking fabric because that pink has white and brown in it and that is gonna, it's gonna fade it. Like adding brown to a color will make it look like a faded version of that color, which is why antique, the antique rose color is that way because antique. But I don't think that she would wear necessarily a faded dress. If she's wearing burgundy, she probably wants it to be a rich color. Because she's uh, definitely dressed in a very, I mean, this is a very fancy gown. So she definitely has some, some moolah, I'd say. And uh, I can't see her going for faded. Oh, yeah. Um, David's flight got delayed by 15 minutes, Quindy, so I'm going to go for just a little longer. I'll probably finish blocking in the burgundy here. Thanks for the thanks for the check. He texted me a bit ago and said, said it was delayed for 15. So they may make up time in the air, but... I'm gonna block in these guys. But yeah, so I would probably go for a red to highlight the burgundy. I might mute out that red or choose a slightly more muted red to do so. I might also look at pictures of uh, a burgundy dress or burgundy cloth on the internet to see kind of how the highlights, what color the highlights look. More than anything, I don't want to go desaturated or or faded on it. I would like this to be a, to seem like a very rich color. It's Quindy's job. Don't worry about it, Twisted Oma. Quindy, I always tell Quindy when I need a time check. She's on it. She is on it. I don't want the whole stream stopping and reminding me when it's time to stop. Trust me. <laughs> you guys keep thinking about painting and leave the time checks to Quindy. My day is kind of all up in the air because I'm losing that hour to the airport run or more, depending. But I'm going to try to get the $10 video up for you guys soon. Plus, I've got those, um, the YouTube freeze that you guys get early access to. I've got to get those up too. Lots of stuff to do. Lots of stuff to do today. It's going to be a hectic Monday.
But I get to make duck tonight. I have this awesome um, orange thyme rub, and then we make a port reduction. So I'm looking forward to dinner. It's gonna be awesome. Maybe I'll do some roasted veggies and duck fat to go with it. It's actually like one of David's favorite things. Like I like duck. I am very much into duck, but uh, when I did this recipe the first time, he like was like, oh my God, this is one of my favorite things now. So yay, win. Eventually I'll have like uh, perspective menus that are built from the things that David and I both love. But I'm, uh, I discovered that there's a kind of a fancy boutique grocery store near us that's a locally owned one, which is, you know, a rarity these days. And they carry um, fresh duck breasts. So I'm super thrilled because I can have duck without having a whole duck. And you pretty much sear them just like steaks. So I do them in cast iron. Alrighty, now the sleeves here, that's a thing. I have to think about the sleeves. I was going to put burgundy on the sleeves, but then I thought if I'm doing black and cream for the corset, then do I want to do black and cream for the sleeves or do I want to do burgundy and cream? And I will, and I've got to pay attention to kind of what's the outer part of the sleeve and what's the inner part of the sleeve. Because I'll probably want the burgundy or black to be the outer and the cream to be the inner because that's what we're doing down here. So... Yes. I grill duck breasts, but I do, um, I roast uh, whole duck, Lady Nim, when I do it. Because I really love roasted duck and the crispy skin. I do not ever grill um, duck breasts. I, I really prefer them in cast iron. I can nail the, the, um, the doneness perfectly in cast iron. And I love how it sears the... Uh, the fat skin side. So I, David's the griller and I leave it to him kind of to work the, the fire machine. I can get, I just, I'm such, I'm so much more experienced with an oven and cast iron when it comes to that stuff that I always will choose that because if I do it on the grill, I might screw it up because I, I it's a learning curve, right? But if I do it in the oven, I can get perfect results every time. So given the choice, I do oven. Yeah, but not, uh, then his flight got slightly delayed, Rex. So I've been kind of watching my phone. It, it'll take him about as long to deplane and get his bag as it takes me to drive to the airport. It's about a half an hour. So I just wanted to keep an eye. And I'm kind of looking, it's interesting because her poofs, her outer poofs. So this is interesting. Her outer poofs actually have a top and a bottom to them where you can see like there's one piece of cloth that's definitely raised and then one that's inside. So the darts are different, but then this part is flat. So the secondary poof is not sculpted that way. And it could just be that it wasn't easy to sculpt and that it's changed up. So I think I'll, I'll kind of judge it that way. I'm going to go for burgundy, and if I decide to redo it in black, because the problem is just that you run burgundy up against burgundy here, but that's not a huge problem. It's the back of the model, so I'm less concerned. I may decide to go over these with black, but we will see. I think I'm going to enjoy the burgundy more. And again, you don't have to be super meticulous here, but I like to be with my base coats because it saves me time cleaning stuff up later when it's more complicated. Haha, <laughs> I was on the keto diet, Twisted Oma, and the keto diet is high fat. Like, and weirdly, when you're on that diet, you develop a taste for fat. You like it's because your body switches over to burning fat in preference uh, instead of carbs, and so it's a weird thing. But ever since I did keto and I'm still low carb, I love fatty foods. I still eat technically a high fat diet, and I lose weight on a high fat diet. It's the weirdest thing. Keto is just the weirdest diet. It's just so weird. Totally counterintuitive. Not for everybody, for sure. But yeah, I like I like the fattiness of the 
the duck underneath the skin. Although if you do it right, you score the skin um, and that lets some of the fat out. So it's, uh, it's not quite as greasy as all that. Oh, wow. Oh, that's too bad. See, Karniko, I'm like, uh, and it, it might be Texas that did this to me, but if it's if it's just barely still mooing, then that's a steak I want to eat. <laughs> oh. Ah. Yeah, Francis, if that's if that's the way you roll, then that makes sense, right? And honestly, if you do a, a neat base coat and like uh, a bit of lining, you can have a perfectly serviceable gaming mini very easily. In fact, if you uh, alternate light and dark colors on your model, it'll look even better. This is even more so if you do very large models. And now we run into this weird sleeve dichotomy. So these sleeves line up, but not all the sleeves line up here. I am going to be done in just a second, I think. I think I'll do this sleeve and then I will end today since I need to get ready for that airport run. Also, I just saw my phone flicker, so I may have a, I may have a fiance. Oh, no, not yet. False alarm. So sometimes these things don't line up, like the this and that actually don't line up great. So yeah, that's some people are. I mean, this is why different diets are good for different people, right? It's because sometimes your body might not react the same way as my body. Like not everybody can do keto. Not everybody can do low fat, you know. Like I tried low fat and it was terrible for my blood sugar. I went on keto and I lost 60 pounds. But that's like, it's everybody's such an individual. Everybody's body is different. It's really fascinating. Like I kind of hope that someday science figures out like, you know, what's going on with that. You know, why, why, uh, why do people's bodies like act so differently to different diets? Like, it's just fascinating to me. I have something in me that thinks it's gotta be like, there's gotta be genetics at play, but. I would never have thought that I could do the keto diet, but it turns out that my body is happiest when it's on it or on low carb anyway. but definitely not for everyone. There we go. So we got that nice sleeve poofed out. And yeah, so if we look at our light and dark, it's still like nice and for the most part, it's very nice and alternating. And that's what we want because that's gonna make all the details on this little model help them stand out a bit. Um, we'll still have to kind of question, and I may do these like ostrich plumes, um, black and white, so that I can put cream up near the hand and black at the tips. And that would actually probably make it stand out against the cream over here and the uh and the red um <laughs> okay crows have fun yeah totally understood yeah i cannot do like i i do not enjoy steak that is hot all the way through like that's how I had steak growing up. My dad always would cook the heck out of it because my mom likes it well done. And I thought I hated steak <laughs> until I had it medium rare. And then I was like, oh, this is why people like steak. It's funny. Everybody is so different. That's the moral of this stream. Yeah, see, then we get to this side, though, and now we've got, like, poofy sleeves that don't line up with other poofy things. That just makes me, like, kind of grouch. <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure out how to make it work. Cause yeah, cause these, these poofs do not line up with this. You see it? Like there's like two different, three different uh, colors here lining up with this single one poof. Uh, I do not marinate steaks. I believe that the flavor of the steak is the best flavor. I will, um, I do uh, dry rub but usually just salt and pepper. Sometimes I'm not, not averse to a little bit of onion and garlic, but I tend to prefer dry rubs to marinating. 
I'm not sure why that is, except that I just, uh, I've had good experience with it. There we go. Awesome. So we'll finish figuring out what the heck we're going to do with this weird other sleeve um, when we come back to this model. But hopefully you guys, guys can kind of see how I'm kind of trying to alternate the light and dark across the mini. That's why I said I wanted one dark color and one whatever color. I figured that I could kind of show you mapping in the darks and then the white primer kind of stands in for the light color. It gives you an idea of, of how all of these features will now stand out on the model. So hopefully that is instructive and uh, melted garlic butter is tasty. But I think we're going to stop there because I think it is time for me to get ready to pick up my guy from a Z airport. I get a David back this week and then I abandon him way off to Arizona with me. So a reminder, I will not be streaming Friday and I will not be doing my own stream on Saturday because I will be out of state. Out of state, yeah, and no Rhonda. So you guys are at see, I took pity on you and did an extra 15 minutes because I knew that you weren't getting a beyond the kit. So uh, yeah, so so it'll be a short week this week, but we will be back tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll, it is uh, 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 bust day. Dinner. Wow, she looks so good on camera. I just gotta say, she looks so good on camera. <laughs> like. <laughs> So bus day tomorrow. Have fun, everybody. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you later. Bye-bye.